Hi guys, uh, my name is Richard Dale, I'm 46 years old and I'm a web developer from West Yorkshire, as you can probably gather from, from my accent. Sorry about the picture quality, it was a it, it was a toss up between terrible uh, picture quality and decent audio or the other way around, so I went for decent audio. Um, so just to give, like I said, I don't really want to sort of repeat what everyone else has said. I know we, we all sort of saying the same thing because I know we all feel the same about this absolute lunacy that's going on at the moment. But I have, I think I have got something slightly unique to say. Um, so just to give you a little bit of a background, you know, like, like many people have said right at the very beginning, you know, I was very much on board with the lockdown strategy. I, I thought it did make, well, it, not that it made particular sense, but I just felt like it was like the only strategy really. Um, but I don't know, there was just something really early on, I remember having a conversation with a colleague of mine and we both sort of said that there, just, there was just something about it that just didn't feel quite right. Um, but I couldn't quite put my finger on, on what it was. Um, but just, the longer it went on and the decisions the government were making, they just, it just made less and less sense, you know. And then I very quickly started looking into it myself and I came across, uh, one of the first sources was um, Toby Young's excellent lockdown skeptics.org which I'm sure um, a lot of you uh, will probably read on a daily basis. Um, and then I came across um, uh, Carl Vernon, I think his YouTube channel's really funny. He, uh, he always hits the nail on the head f for, for me, and I find it... Uh, I mean, it's one of those things, isn't it, this, where you, you kind of, if you didn't laugh about it, you'd, you'd, you'd almost certainly cry. And to be honest, sometimes it has almost brought me to tears. I mean, I've... I am single at the moment and I don't have a family and I've always wanted a family but right now I'm I'm almost certainly glad that I haven't got kids to be honest and what a what a sad horrible thing to say that is um I just think the way that we what's going on with the schools and and whether we, we they get we, we get them back in September I don't know I I very much doubt it or doubt it'll be as it should be but seeing young children in masks and when you they like avoid you in supermarkets and stuff it's just it's just awful to see I mean, fortunately, um, my mum's sort of on board with this and she totally agrees with, with us and, you know, she just thinks it's a massive overreaction. And, um, but unfortunately, my, uh, my dad doesn't and he's very much like a, a mask wearer or a, a muzzles wearer, as we, as we call them, and I'm sure many of you do. So, like I say, I don't want to um, sort of reiterate a lot of what people have said, but I think one of the things, like the angle I'd like to put on it is, um, I mean, I've never been a big... A fan of sort of conspiracy theories and whether they are conspiracy theories or not I mean that's it becomes a, a bigger question as time goes on but I just find them deeply um, sort of dissatisfying you know because you just never know really the truth I mean I know you never know the truth anyway really but you, I just find like you just go down a rabbit hole and it just opens another can of worms and I just find them really sort of dissatisfying so I've tried to not let myself go down that road um, but I think, as well, it's it's not. I'm not saying it's irrelevant, but I think that's one of the mistakes a lot of people who think like us uh, have made. I know when there's been a lot of these protests. Um, I remember there's been a few where um, Piers Corbyn's been there and a few of the others. And I think the minute people start mentioning like Agenda 21 and lockstep and you know all this sort of thing and anti-vaxxers and you know all the thing the 5G and all this kind of thing. And whether that's true or not, some of it, I think, probably isn't, and some of it pr might be. I mean, I've, I've I've looked into some of it, and some of it I don't find overly convincing, if I'm being totally honest. And I don't know if it's just because I don't want to al allow myself to believe it because it's so horrible. Um, but I think largely that's not not irrelevant, like I say. But I think we need, just need to box clever because I think. One of the things that's really disappointed me when I've seen a lot of these protests is they've all carried like signs like 5G and Agenda 21 and Plandemic and Sheeple and all. I don't like that term Sheeple either. I know it just don't, and I, and I just think it, all we do by doing that is just make it so easy for people just to say, oh, you know, they're just right wing extremists and, you know, the conspiracy theorists and they're all mad, you know, just ignore them. And I think that's the mistake. Um, we're making really I think we'd be far better you know avoiding all those sort of things and you know avoid anything that people can just write off as a conspiracy theory and just concentrate on the things that we know for a fact you know it's been obvious for months that the lockdown's causing far more harm um, than it is good and it's I mean it, I was listening to talk radio tonight and there were a couple of uh, journalists on there and they're on about the herd immunity strategy and this 
left wing guy was sort of saying, oh, he's just allowing um, old people to die. And it's like, well, what do you think a lockdown strategy does? You know, th- you know, millions of people will die because of this lockdown, especially in the developing countries. You know, it's just, it, I, I just find it insane that we're still in this lockdown. And it's just, I mean, I live in Kirklees as well, which is still in under some degree of lockdown, although most people I know have completely ignored it. So all it's served to do is completely wreck business even further. But like I said, just going back to my point, I think I think the key point from this video that I'd like to uh, like like people to take away is like like just box a bit clever. And I think the minute you give people that you know that easy way out of saying oh it's just a conspiracy theory, it's, you know, and then have the little five G signs and all that. And I think just concentrate on the things that we know for a fact. You know, this lockdown has completely wrecked his economy, and he's. I think, I mean, depending on who you listen to, what's coming in the winter is going to be absolutely awful. You know, it could be food shortages and, I mean, you know, you really do worry. I mean, there were people in queuing up for food banks in Las Vegas, you know, so if you see that, then you you do you do worry. I mean, I hope it's not as bad as that in the UK, I, I, I really do, but I, I am tempted to stock up on a, on a few, um, you know, things like pastas and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, just going back to that sort of central point, I just think, you know, try and box a bit clever, you know, concentrate on the things that we know for a fact, the wrecked economy, we're not educating as children, you know, think of how many deaths are going to be caused from undiagnosed cancers and all other things, I mean, like a load of people have said, the NHS is pretty much dead at the moment, you know, you, they're not servicing anyone, Dent, the, you know, even the dentist, you, I mean, I, I need a filling and, you know, it's just impossible to see a dentist without the crazy social distancing and all the other crap that we're having to endure at the moment um so like so so that would be my take from this you know rather than focusing on the conspiracies or possible conspiracies concentrate on the things that we know for a fact that we've definitely lost i mean it annoyed me the other day when my because my dad like i say he does wear a, a muzzle as i call them when he goes shopping and he said well he turns, he's, he's retired he's in his early 70s and he said well it hasn't particularly affected me i said well of course it has uh, my brother's a chef, he's not worked since March, so they're having to support him, pay his rent. You know, they're really into the dancing, they've never, they haven't been dancing since there, you know, they haven't been on holiday, they love the holidays. It's the fact their lives in loads of ways, you know, they, can't, they, they couldn't go to the pub for ages, they couldn't see their friends, but it just goes on and on. You know, so when I pointed these things out to him, we were like, oh, well, yeah, I suppose it has affected me, you know, so it's just like, of course it's affected you, it's completely affected you. Um, so yeah, so like I said, I think we just need to box a bit clever, try and get these messages home, but don't focus in on the, you know, the things that are just a bit too easy to write off as conspiracy theories. Um, you know, box clever. Let's try and change a few people's minds about this because I think, I mean, I, I thought one. I'll just end on this. I mean, I thought this was absolutely fascinating. I don't. I, 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 probably a lot of people listen to talk radio and the conversations that have been taking place between Peter Hitchens and Mike Graham. And I know Mike, as the week has, weeks have gone, gone on, at the, at the start, Mike was sort of very much, I wouldn't say, well, yeah, I suppose he was pro-lockdown, really, and sort of thought it was the only, way, you know, the only way that we could go. But as the weeks have gone on, he's agreed with Peter more and more. I mean, you'll know that Peter's a massive advocate of, uh, well, you know, an anti-lockdown, well, complete lockdown sceptic. Um, and as the weeks have gone on, he's sort of managed to convince Mike, and they, they pretty much totally agree now. But I went and watched some of the early videos last night on YouTube, and it was amazing how right Peter was, you know, and he's just been saying the same thing. He's been so consistent as Peter Richens. And uh, those videos just haven't aged well at all for Mike, you know, and he's just, you, you know, I mean, not that he knew at the time, obviously, but um, they just don't age well, those at all. And, um, you know, sorry to say that Peter was just completely right. And uh, I just, I'm just so, so thankful that we have got people like Peter Hitchens, um, because he's about one of the only people at the moment um, that is speaking sense. I mean, the media have just been an absolute disgrace. I've just cancelled my uh, TV licence because of it, because I just just being so biased i mean it's just it's just so unfair i mean just just to end on this and i could I like a lot of people you could just go on for ages could, you know um but like one of my mum's friends she's in her early 70s and she just won't dare go out she's just been scared to death because she hasn't got any family to give her like a you know a counter to what's what she's hearing in, on the bbc basically and uh, my mum's re- you know she's really good friends with her and she won't even meet her for a coffee, even in a park, you know, with a flask. And it's just so sad, you know, in the, the autumn of her life, she's in her early 70s. Not really in the autumn, but, you know, get, you know, obviously she's no spring chicken in the 70s. But nothing, nothing wrong with her, perfectly healthy woman. 
you know, but she just won't dare go out, and it's just so sad, you know. It's, and, and I hear a lot of people go, you know, talk about like next year, as if like in twenty twenty one, it's gonna everything magically is gonna go back to normal. It's just like no, you know, wake up now. If we don't take a stand now, stop wearing these ridiculous, absolutely inhumane masks. And because sh- one of the things with the masks as well, I think some people it really annoys me when people just say. About the masks, that it's not—it's not much of an imposition to wear a mask. You know, it's just a piece of cloth. It's like, well, no, to wear a mask in isolation isn't isn't much of an imposition. Yeah, you're right, but it's what they stand for. It's what they symbolise. And to me, they symbolise, you know, that the, that you support the government and the the ridiculous decisions that they're making. And I won't do that. And I think that's one of the clearest things that you can do is don't wear a muzzle because it shows. When, when you don't wear one, you know, it shows that you're not supporting the government. And I think that's one of the clearest messages you can send. I think the, the sooner they get that message that we're not, you know, just going to sit back and just let us watch his lives just disappear down the drain and oh, his way of life, sorry. Um, you know, the quicker they get that message, the better. So anyway, this video has gone on now for 11 minutes and I've probably gone a little bit rambly. Um, but if I re-record it, I'll probably almost uh, certainly just do the same. So I'll end it here. So thanks very much again for the opportunity. And let's stay strong. Keep those messages clear. And don't, don't make it easy for people to just write them off. Okay, cheers guys. Thanks a lot.